tools in the algebra classroom for simplifying and evaluating expressions is the distributive property of multiplication through addition and subtraction, division through addition and subtraction. So this is how the distributive property works to remind you. If I have a number pressed up against the parentheses, what it means is that number is going to multiply the entire package. And I can accomplish multiplying the entire package by multiplying each element individually within the package. Meaning this, right, in plain language. This 4 multiplies 2x, that's one term of the package, to give us 8x. The same 4 multiplies plus 3y to give us plus 12y. And that same 4 multiplies minus 11 to give us minus 44. Okay, distributive property. A number pressed up against the parentheses multiplies each of the terms within the parentheses and the value of this expression down here is the same as the original orange one. All right, so that's how the distributive property works with multiplication. Now, the distributive property works very similarly with division. If I have a fraction bar, I'm dividing this package, this numerator, by 7, and I can accomplish the same thing by dividing each term separately. So 35m divided by 7 gives us 5m's, and minus 14 divided by 7 gives us minus 2. Okay, so... 5m minus 2 is equivalent to the original purple expression. I guess that might look blue on your screen. Something to be particularly mindful of, if I am distributing a negative value through parentheses, multiplying by a negative switches signs. Okay, so negative 7 times negative 3, positive 21, x squared. Negative 7 times plus 2 will be minus 14 x's. Negative 7 times minus 8 will be plus 56, okay? If I'm distributing a negative value, it ends up changing all of the operators within the parentheses. The commutative property of addition and multiplication says that if I am adding terms together, I can switch the order of the terms and still have the same sum. So if you look from here to there, 7g's plus 6 plus 4g's, all right, I can pull this entire term to the end and I will not change the value of the expression. Okay, that's useful for a situation like this when you want to move like terms, terms that have the same variable value next to each other so that you can combine them. All right. Same thing that I'm allowed to do with multiplication. If I am just multiplying a string of values together, the order in which I do the multiplication will not matter. I can slide one factor farther along, regardless, 6 times 9 will give me the same thing as 18 times 3. All right, 6 times 9, 54, 18 times 3, 54, right? So I can, I can move terms within an expression only in these cases, all right? Addition, multiplication, not even a mixture of addition and multiplication. Just pure addition, pure multiplication. All right. Now, normally, commutative property seems basic. Uh, 
where you're going to run into trouble is if you try to commute items that are not commutable, like division and subtraction. The associative property is also a property that works exclusively with multiplication and addition. So associative property says normally, normally we add from left to right. So it's understood that this operation will happen first and then this operation second. However, I will not change the value of the expression if I change who is associating together. All I'm doing is adding. I could add these terms first and it will not change the value of my expression. Okay, so associative property is kind of like the community of property, but it says you can slide parentheses around if all you're doing is adding or multiplying. Right? Seven times five. 35 times 4 will give me the same exact answer as 7 times 20. All right, 7 times 5 times 4, 20 times 7. Those expressions will give me the same answer. Uh, I mean, this is helpful for mental math types of stuff. It's easier to do 20 times 7, 140. Be a little tougher for me to do 35 times 4, but I know now that it is also 140 because of the associative property. Now, there's some ways we can work around subtraction and division not being able to commute or associate and we can use the definitions of subtraction and division to to help us with that so if for some reason you wanted to commute but you have a subtraction sign that's messing you up subtraction is actually the same as adding the opposite so i can change a subtraction symbol into an addition symbol if I switch the sign of what follows it, okay? Similarly, for division, division is the same thing as multiplying by a reciprocal. So t divided by five, the same as t times reciprocal of five, flip the fraction over, all right? Five over one, its reciprocal would be one over five, all right? So t divided by 5 is the same as t times 1 fifth, all right? Like terms, we already talked about. Like terms are terms that have exactly the same variable components, exactly the same letters in them, okay? So, and exactly the same powers of those letters. So we have right here t squared u. We have right here t to the third. Those are not alike. Okay, we have here t u. It's not like either of these. t squared u is like the first one. All right. It's important to be able to identify like terms because like terms are the only kind of terms that can get combined using addition and subtraction. All right. Any kind of terms can get combined using multiplication or division, but like terms are the only ones that can get combined using addition or subtraction. So I could rewrite this combining 11t squared u and 7t squared u as 18t squared u, okay? But I couldn't combine anything else, so the simplest, simplest form of that expression is still a trinomial, three terms in it. Now, challenge think on this combining like terms is really just applying the commutative property and the reverse of the distributive property kind of undistributed all right combining like terms is applying the commutative property and the reverse of the distributive property all right if you can put down for me in writing or in words how exactly that works with an example, let me know. All right, this is a challenge for you. Order of operations you learned way back in elementary school, and it got repeated pretty much every year that you are in math class.
Okay, order of operations, always in effect. What is, what is the proper order of operations? When you have multiple operations happening within an expression, you apply those operations from most powerful down to least powerful, okay? The most powerful operations are things like exponents and square roots. Exponents and roots, radicals, all right? Those are the most powerful operations that we usually see. Second most powerful would be multiplication and division. The least powerful operations that we use are addition and subtraction, so they happen last. When you have equally powerful operations, you apply the ones on the left first and work your way to the right. Okay, so in this situation, I would deal with my exponents first. Now, if powerful terms are separated from each other, by lots of other terms, we can do them simultaneously. And that's usually what I do at the algebra two level. So four squared, four times four is 16, six to the third, six times six is 36, 30 times six is 180, six times six is another 36. So we got 216, All right? Six times six times six, 216, okay? So I dealt with this, I dealt with this, all of the things I did not deal with, we bring down. Okay, every symbol. You have to be very careful when you're doing a problem that has a lot of operations into it that you don't drop things out by accident. Okay, five plus 11 times four squared divided by two minus three plus six to the third power. Okay. My next powerful operations are the multiplication and division. I cannot do them at the same time because they're right next to each other. So I'll work from left to right. 5 plus 11 times 16 is 160 plus 16, 176. Divided by 2 minus 3 plus 216. All right. Division is the next powerful operation. Five plus 176 divided by two would be 50, 35, and three. So 88 minus three plus 216. All right, and when you get down to the part where you have only addition and subtraction, then you're working from left to right, obviously. So We've got five plus 83, or five plus 88 is 93. 93 minus three will be 90. Don't forget your 216. Final answer, fully simplified form, will be 306. Okay, that is following order of operations as long as there's no grouping symbols. All right, now, you don't have to do all the math in your head like I was attempting to do. You may, of course, if you wish. When you're doing a problem in this section, skill number one section like this, I am going to want to see step by step, all right, one or two operations at a time per line happening, all right? What I do expect you to do, though, when you finish is grab a calculator and you can, again, you can use the calculator for the individual steps. Like, for example, if you can't do six to the third power like I did, type it in the calculator. Six to the third power is 216. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, same kind of thing, though. When you get all the way to the end, I want you to check your answer. Right? And you check your answer by typing the entire original problem in 5 plus 11 times 4 squared divided by 2 minus 3 plus 6 to the third power. Answer. Okay. Should get an answer that matches your final answer. If you don't, then you know you made a mistake somewhere and you need to go back and check.
Grouping symbols let me break order of operations if I, if I so desire, right? Normally, multiplication is more powerful than addition, so we would do 4 times 9 is 36, plus 2 is 38, okay? If, for whatever reason, I wanted, or the textbook writer wanted, test maker wanted me to add before multiplying, the way that I would indicate that, or the way that they would indicate that is group the two plus four together inside of parentheses or brackets or braces. In this case, then you would add two plus four, six, then times nine, 54, right? Different, different answer because we're doing stuff in a different order, right? If there are multiple sets of parentheses, um, multiple sets of parentheses in one inside of another, then we work from the farthest inside and work our way out. So in this case, you would do your 2 plus 4, 6, then 6 times 9, 54, and then all of that, 54 squared, some really big number. All right, order of operations. A uh, couple other grouping symbols that you have to be familiar with, fraction bars. Okay, there is an understood parentheses around the numerator and the denominator in a fraction bar. And if you are putting a fraction into the calculator, you have to physically tell the calculator, here's my numerator inside of parentheses. And then here's my denominator inside of parentheses with a division symbol in between them. Okay, fraction bar doubles as grouping two things and then dividing them. Uh, square root or cubed root or to the fourth root, all right, radicals. Un it's understood that you are grouping together everything that's inside of a square root and absolute value, absolute value symbols, all right. Absolute value, remember, always returns positive whatever's inside of there. So negative 15 in there as a final answer will return positive 15. Positive 8 in there as a final answer, return positive 8. All right. My expectation is that uh, this, is, this is a review for all of you. If you are not familiar with those symbols, please, definitely, we need to chat when you get to class. Simplify. If you're asked to simplify something, you're being asked to take that thing and combine as many parts of it as you can to get it as small and as simple as possible. Right? Definitely, you always get rid of parentheses. You always combine like terms, okay? So this situation right here, I'm gonna simplify it. First, I would distribute this seven, seven times two, 14 X's, seven times plus 19, 70 and 63. It's 133. Seven times minus 4x is minus 28x. Okay, notice I'm not going to multiply 7 times x because that's not included in the parentheses. All right, so distribute. I'm going to bring down my plus x and then combine like terms. Remember, if you have a variable without a coefficient, there is an understood coefficient of 1, okay? So my like terms, 14x's minus 28x's plus 1x, 14 minus 28, negative 14 plus 1, negative 13x's, all right? Unlike term, plus 133, okay? That they cannot be combined. There's nothing else that I can do. I've made it as simple as it can be. That's a simplifying an algebraic expression, right? Evaluating an expression means that somewhere in the midst of presenting information to you, I'm going to have to tell you what each variable actually equals, right? So, Evaluate this expression when 
x equals five. Okay, if I give you that information, then you can go farther than just simplifying. You can get all the way to a final answer. If x equals five, we do what's called substituting, replace the x with a five. All right, negative 13 times five. Almost always when I'm doing a substitution, I put my, my value in parentheses. Uh, it helps sometimes to not make certain mistakes. Okay, so we've got evaluate this for x equals five, replace the x with a five, and then evaluate. Negative 13 times five is negative 65. Negative 65 plus 133 is positive 68, maybe. And again, I can check my final answer. Grab a calculator. Up top here, I'm going to type 7 parenthesis 2 times 5 plus 19 minus 4 times 5, close the parenthesis, plus 5. All right, I replaced all of my x's with 5's, come out with 68 in the calculator. So I know that I'm correct, all right, and I can move on confidently. All right, just one more example of evaluating expressions. It's going to be the main thing that I'm interested in you being able to do in class tomorrow or the next day, depending on when you're watching this. Okay, evaluate this expression for m equals negative 11, n equals negative 2. First step, substitute, replace variables with what they actually equal. Okay, so 2 times negative 11 plus 3 times negative 2, all of that over negative 2 squared minus 11. I'm going to do, simplify my numerator, right? 2 times negative 11, negative 22, plus 3 times negative 2, negative 6. All right, I did the multiplication in my numerator. I'm going to simplify my denominator. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Again, if you struggle to do the mental math or the paper and pencil math, you can put negative 2 times negative 2 in the calculator to get this answer. Right? And I still haven't dealt with my minus 11. All right, I still need to simplify the numerator. Negative 22 plus negative 6 is negative 28. That will be divided by 4, and then we'll be subtracting 11. Negative 28 divided by 4 is negative 7, minus 11. And last step, negative 7 minus 11 is negative 18. All right, double checking. With a calculator, in the calculator, parentheses, 2 times negative 11 plus 3 times negative 2, close parentheses, fraction bar divided by parentheses, negative 2. Parentheses squared. Minus 11. All right. Answer. Hopefully I get negative 18. Then I can be sure I'm correct. Check. Let's me know I checked it. And I move on.